Hello everyone, this is Praveen Agrawal, your maths teacher and in this video we are going to discuss a JE Advanced 2024 Mathematics Paper 2 Detailed Solution. Now overall the review is that the paper was more or less easy. There were mostly easy to moderate questions and a few tough questions you might say which is uh, easier than uh, relatively the previous year questions. Alright, so the first question is based upon ITF, Inverse Trigonometric Functions and we have to find the principal value of this expression. The ideal way to solve such questions is we convert everything to tan inverse only. And you know how to enter convert, suppose we have sin inverse 3 by 5. So what will it be in terms of tan inverse? Imagine a right angle triangle whose perpendicular is 3 and hypotenuse is 5 then base will be 4. So tan theta will be 3 by 4. So it will be tan inverse 3 by 4. So my expression is uh, tan of tan inverse of 3 by 4 minus now 2 cos inverse th uh, x here we can apply the formula of this is equal to cos inverse of 2x square minus 1 so this will be cos inverse of 2 times 2 by root 5 whole square is 4 by 5 minus 1. now this is cos inverse of 3 by 5 and similarly if we convert cos inverse 3 by 5 into tan inverse it will be tan inverse 4 by 3 so what we have here is tan of tan inverse of 3 by 4 minus tan inverse of 4 by 3 and here now we can apply the formula of tan of a minus b which is tan a minus tan b upon 1 plus tan a tan b also uh, basically uh, tan of tan inverse x is always equals to x so expression will simplify a lot so if you apply the formula it will actually be 3 by 4 minus 4 by 3 whole divided by 1 plus 3 by 4 into 4 by 3 if we calculate this, this will be 9 minus 16 is minus 7 divided by 12 times 2 is 24. So minus 7 divided by 24, which is my option number B. And it was a rather easy question. All right. Next is question number 2 is based upon area under the curve. Now in any question of area under the curve, you should always begin with uh, drawing the rough sketch of the curve. So let us start with that. So, first of all is x is greater than or equals to 0, y is greater than or equals to 0 means we are only talking about the first quadrant. We are going to ignore any other area, we will restrict ourselves to first quadrant. Next is y squared less than or equals to 4x. We will consider the inequality later as of now. Let's draw the equation y squared equals to 4x. We know it's a very much standard parabola whose mouth opens towards the right hand side. This is my y squared equals to 4x. Next is y square is equal to 12 minus 2x. It's a shifted parabola. Its vertex is at 6 comma 0. And its mouth opens towards the left hand side. So this is such kind of a parabola. Now we need to find this point of intersection. For that we can equate their y squares. So 12 minus 2x equals to 4x. So 6x equals to 12 or x is equals to uh, 2. So the x coordinate of this point of intersection is 2. And if you put x equals to here you will get y equals to plus minus 2 root 2. Let us only take a talk about this point in the first quadrant. So it will be 2 comma 2 root. This point by the way is 6 comma 0. Alright and this point is 0 comma 0. Let me project this over here as well. Now finally we need to draw this line. So let us begin with finding the x intercept of this line. How do you find x intercept? you put y equals to 0 and find the value of x, so x will be 5. So this line cuts the x-axis at 5 comma 0 and now I can either find its point of intersection with this curve or this curve or this sine x equals to 2. Just uh, for the sake of simplicity, let me try to find where does this cut this line x equals to 2. This line is x equals to 2. So if I substitute x equals to 2 in here, if I substitute x equals to 2, my y will turn out to be uh, root of 8, which is actually 2 root 2. So actually this passes through this whole point. So our life became really, really simple. So it is actually this line. Now let's talk about the inequalities. Now which areas do we want? If you talk about y square is less than equals to 4x, if you take a point like let's say 6 comma 0, it will satisfy this equation. So we want everything. Inside this parabola, similarly, if you take the point 0, 0, it satisfies this equation means we want everything inside this parabola. 
and this whole thing is less than equals to 5 root 8. So if, you, if I take origin 0 plus 0 is less than 5 root 8. So we want everything towards the left hand side of this line. So if I shade the desired area in this yellow color, it is this whole area. Let me shade it using green color. So it is this desired region. Now let me divide it into two parts. One is this region below this first parabola and second is this triangular region. And you know that for triangular region, you don't need to do any integration. You can just find its area. That too, it's a right angle triangle. So half base into height, where base is 5, comma 0, this point is 2, comma 0, so 3 units. And the height is 2 root 2 units. So its area can be found very, very easily. So the only integration that we'll need to do is for this area A1. So let me write the full and final expression for the area. My desired total area will be from 0 to 2. If I write y in terms of x for this curve, it will be 2 times root x dx plus half into base is 3 and height is 2 root 2 units. So this whole thing is 2 times integral of root x is 2 by 3 x power 3 by 2 from 0 to 2 plus 3 root 2. This is 4 by 3 times if I put x equals to 2, it will become 2 root 2 and by putting 0, it will be 0. So nothing needs to be done with respect to that. This is 4 to the 8, 8 plus 9, 17, 17 by 3 times root 2. Now, if they are equating it to alpha root 2, then clearly the value of alpha is 17 by 3, option number B. Uh, this was a moderate question, slightly lengthy because you had to mark these many curves, find your points of intersection and this insight that if I just try x equals to 2, then the point of intersection of this line and both the parabolas is very, very simple. If it was anything else than this too, then our life would have been difficult. Alright, next question is a question of limit. So limit extends to 0 plus. This whole expression goes to 1 because this sine of 0 is 1, 0 is 1 and cos 0 is, uh, sorry, sine 0 is 0, x equals to 0 tends to 0 and cos 0 tends to 1. And the uh, this exponent 2 by x uh, goes to infinity. So it's actually 1 raised to the power infinity in determinate form. And all of us know how to do it. Suppose we have limit x tends to a fx whole power gx, where uh, this is 1 raised to the power infinity in determinate form. We can write it as e raised to the power limit x tends to a gx times fx minus so if I apply this formula, this whole limit, desired limit will be e raised to the power. So e raised to the power limit x tends to 0 plus. Let me write gx first, 2 by x times fx minus 1. So it will be sine of, sine of kx plus, let me rearrange this a little bit. Let me write x first and cos x later and then minus now I'm going to separate these limits, this limit, this limit and this whole expression because all of these are standard trigonometric limits. Now this whole limit is given as e power 6. So from here onwards it will be e raised to the power limit x tends to 0 plus. Uh, this will be, let me keep this 2 outside, this will be sine of, uh, sine of kx divided by x plus x divided by x will become 1 plus cos x minus 1 divided by x. Let me do one thing. Let me multiply and divide by x square for this expression because this whole limit is half and half into 0 will become 0. So this whole limit is 0. This limit is x by x 1 and this whole limit is simply k. So overall this limit on the left hand side is e raised to the power 2 times k plus 1. And if this is e raised to the power 6, then if you say 2 times k plus 1 is equal to 6. So k plus 1 will be 3 and hence k will be equals to 2. So this is a question of standard limits. It's like a J mean level question, not even J advanced level question, uh, rather easy. All right, moving on to the next one. What we have here is again a single correct question only. We have been given a function fx is equal to x square sine of pi by x square if x is non-zero and zero when x is zero. Now what are the options? The options are fx equals to zero has infinitely many solutions in the interval 1 by 10 raised to the power 10 to infinity. Now let us talk about its solution. So x square sine of pi by x square this whole thing is equals to zero. 
if and only if this thing is 0 because x square if x is not 0 will always be positive and sin theta equals to 0 general solution are x is equals to n pi. So, my pi by x square is equals to n pi where n is any integer or x square is equals to 1 by n let me cancel this pi. Now, here we cannot even take negative integers because otherwise x square is a uh, you know is a positive number so 1 by n also has to be positive so n belongs to let us say natural number only. And now my x will be plus minus 1 by root of n. So, if I write this in uh, you know roster form if I write couple of these elements it will be uh, 1 now at 0 it is 0 of course. So, 0 is one of the roots another is 1 minus 1 1 by root 2 minus 1 by root 2 1 by root 3 minus 1 by root 3 and so on. Now, if I talk about all the positive solutions all of them are less than or equal to 1 there is no positive solution which will be greater than 1. While what is the first statement saying? It is saying that it has infinitely many solutions in this interval that is clearly false. Okay, beyond 1 you will stop getting solutions so statement 1 is false. Statement 2 is fx equals to 0 has no solutions in the interval 1 by pi to infinity that is not true because 1 clearly lies in this interval. Okay, 1 is greater than 1 by pi, pi is roughly 3.14 so 1 by 3.14 1 is greater than that. So that is also false, b is also false. How about C? The set of solutions of x equals to 0 in the interval 0 to 1 by 10 raised to the power 10 is finite. That is not true. If I write all the solutions, you know, positive solutions, it will be 0, 1 by root 2, 1 by root 3, 1 by root 4, and so on. It will keep on decreasing, okay. Uh, it starts from 1, okay. Let us talk about 1, so, from bigger to smaller. So, these are like infinitely many solutions. If you talk about all the solutions less than 1 by 10 raised to the power 10, still you can take an arbitrarily small number and be between 0 to that arbitrarily small number, let me call this number delta between any 0 to delta, where delta is greater than 0, they will always be infinitely many solutions. So, this is finite, this is also false. So, by rejection, D must be true, but let us verify this. fx equals to 0 has more than 25 solutions in the interval 1 by pi square to 1 by pi. Let me write the approximate values 1 by pi square will be roughly 1 by uh, 3.14 whole square to 1 by 3.14. Just for the sake of simplicity why don't I write it as 1 by uh, 3 whole square is 9 to 1 by uh, 3. And let me write these in terms of square root because as you can see all the expressions are in terms of 1 by root of an integer. 9 is square root of what number? 1 by 81 and 3 is the square root of what number? 1 by 9. So, clearly which all numbers will lie between them? Uh, root of 1 by root 10, 1 by root of 11, 1 by root of 12 and so on till 1 by root of 80. Even if you you know leave couple of these, uh, there will be uh, very well more than 25 solutions in this interval. So, option number D is indeed This was a slightly moderate question. All right, next is let S be the set of all alpha, beta belongs to set of real numbers such that this limit equals to 0. Then you have to uh, see which of the following options are correct. That is which pair alpha, comma, beta belongs to that set S for, the, for which this limit becomes 0. So, all we can do is we can quickly start checking the limits for which of the values of alpha and beta do the limit exist for which the limit does not exist. Not only exists, the limit exists and is equal to 0. Okay, we have to check all those values of alpha and beta. And this is a multiple correct question. From the fifth question onwards, we have questions whose answer can be more than one correct also. And in these questions, you can score partial marks. You have to actively avoid any guesswork and you cannot mark any anything randomly. But if suppose out of the four options, you are confident about one option that this is correct, then you will get partial marks. So you have to try to score those partial marks. Now, if I put uh, alpha as minus 1 and beta equals to 3, as per my first option, my limit will become limit x tends to infinity sine of x square, then we have ln x raised to the power minus 1, then we have sine of 1 by x square. Why don't I take care of the sine of 1 by x square right away? Uh, I can divide and multiply it by 1 by x square. So, that as x goes to infinity, 1 by x square goes to 0. And uh, sine of 1 by x square divided by 1 by x square will become equals to 1. 
So what will remain is simply uh, a 1 by x square. So I can practically replace this whole thing with x square to make our life simple. So this sine of 1 by x square and directly not approximating or anything I am just uh, putting an intermediate limit where I am dividing or multiplying by 1 by x square so that finally 1 by x square only remain. In the numerator we have their product will become minus 3. So x power minus 3 times ln of 1 plus x whole raised to the power beta is how much? 3. Now in order to complete this limit we will need x cube. So let me multiply by now this x cube is already there. So this whole limit will become equals to 1. This whole thing is taken care of. Now uh, what remains ultimately is limit x tends to infinity sine of x square whole divided by ln x times x square. Now as x goes to infinity sine of x square will dwindle between minus 1 and 1. It will oscillate between minus 1 and 1. So it is a finite quantity. While denominator both the terms will go to infinity. So this is something finite like between lying between minus 1 to 1 whole divided by infinity. So this will indeed be 0. So option number A is one of the correct answers. Let us look at similarly B. Now there is an alternate way of doing this question where what you can do is you can uh, uh, you can uh, find all the set of values of alpha and beta for which this limit is 0 but uh, this is rather simple just to take check option. So we already checked option number A now let us check for option number B. If we put alpha is minus 1 and beta is 1 limit will become limit x tends to infinity. So essentially you have to just check for 4 different limits uh, whether they are equal to 0 or not and that you can do very fast practically 30 seconds to 1 minute for each of these limits and you will get faster with time. So it will be uh, sin of x square which will remain as finite we know that all right what we have is sin of x square uh, times ln of x power alpha is how much again minus 1 ln x power minus 1 this is 1 by x uh, square again not a problem now denominator we got to be careful x power minus 1 and ln of 1 plus x whole raised to the power how much beta is simply 1 again this whole limit will become equals to 1 and what will happen to others other limits will be limit x tends to infinity sin of x square divided by x square ln x practically giving the same result and again this is 0 only for the same reasons as option number a. Uh, so basically my option number a was correct now option number b is also correct. Let us quickly check for option number c. If I put uh, alpha is 1 and beta is minus 1 what will happen? So l will be limit x tends to infinity sin of x square now this will become ln of x power 1 and this will become 1 by x square only and this is how much this is x power minus 1 again and ln of 1 plus x whole power this time we have alpha beta is minus 1. Now this is slightly tricky so let us uh, do each of these limit x tends to infinity if this is in the if I take it in the numerator ln of 1 plus x I will need an x to compensate for it. Now this will dwindle between minus 1 and 1. We have ln x in the numerator this time and we have x square in the denominator and one more x in the denominator. Let me put it in the denominator of this. This gets cancelled this become equals to 1 this gets cancelled. Sin of x square will dwindle between minus 1 and 1 and ln x will go to infinity. So this limit is definitely not 0. This limit we can say that it uh, does not exist basically because sin x square will be oscillating and ln of x will go tend to infinity. So c is not correct for sure and if you check d also in such a manner what will change is for option number d uh, limit x tends to infinity sin of x square ln x whole power 1 into 1 by x square whole divided by x power minus 2 ln of 1 plus x whole power minus 2. So you will find that uh, this limit and this will become equals to 1. Uh, rest what we have is limit x tends to infinity 
साइन ऑफ एक्स स्क्वायर टाइम्स एक्स स्क्वायर एल एन एक्स एज वी नो दैट दिस विल गो टू इन्फिनिटी दिस विल गो टू इन्फिनिटी वट अबाउट दिस दिस विल ऑसलेट बिटवीन माइनस वन एंड वन सो अगेन दिस लिमिट इज डेफिनेटली नॉट इक्वल्स टू जीरो सो दी ओनली आंसर आर ऑप्शन नंबर ए एंड बी ऑल राइट दिस वॉज अ मॉडरेट क्वेश्चन बिकॉज स्लाइटली लेंदी नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज अ स्ट्रेट लाइन ड्रॉन फ्रॉम द पॉइंट P parallel to this line. Let me write away. Write the equation of this line. A line parallel to this means direction ratios will be one to one and passes through one three two. Line will be x minus one upon one is equals to y minus three upon two is equals to z minus two by three. And let me assume a point lambda on this line. So the coordinates of that point lambda will be lambda plus one, two lambda plus three, and three lambda plus two. All right. Now a straight line drawn from this point parallel to this intersects the plane x minus y plus 3z equals to 6 at the point Q. Suppose this point itself is Q, and because this point lies on this plane, it will satisfy the equation of this plane. That's how we can find lambda. So if I satisfy Q on this plane, I will get lambda plus 1 minus 2 lambda minus 3 and plus 3 3 is a 9 lambda plus 6 is equals to 6. Six and six get cancelled. Nine plus one, ten, and ten uh, minus how much? Okay. By the way, this was one only. My bad. Z minus two divided by one. So this is only lambda plus two. So this is also how much? This is. Uh, let me redo some of these calculations. Minus two lambda minus three, and ultimately it will be. Plus three lambda plus is equals to six. Three lambda plus lambda four lambda four lambda minus two lambda is two lambda. Two lambda equals to two, so lambda equals to one. And if you put lambda equals to one here, the point turns out to be two comma five comma three. That is my point Q. I have gotten point Q. Very very important. We are going to remember this. Next is another straight line which passes through Q and is perpendicular to the plane L one. By the way, what is normal vector to the plane n one? This is one comma minus one comma three. And if a line is perpendicular to this plane, its direction vectors will be this only, right? So the equation of this line passing through Q and parallel to this vector will be uh, uh, which line? X minus two divided by one is equals to y minus five divided by minus one is equals to z minus three divided by three. This time, let me put it equals to mu. So if I solve for uh, x y z, my x will be equals to uh, mu plus two, y will be minus mu plus five, and z will be three mu plus three. And what are they calling this point now? This line, this new line, intersects the plane, new plane L two at the point R. So let me assume the coordinates of R to be mu plus two. Minus mu plus five and three mu plus three and how will you find the mu? Because this point R lies on this this plane L two, so it will satisfy the equation of this plane. So if I substitute that, I'll get two mu plus four mm, plus mu minus five and plus three mu plus three equals to minus four. So two mu plus mu three mu plus three mu six mu. Is equals to nine minus three is minus six. So my mu equals to minus one. If I substitute mu equals to minus one, this point R will be one comma six comma zero. So I got point R as well. I got Q. I got R. I have P. Now which of the following options are true? The length of line segment PQ is root six. P is one three two. Q is two five three. So let us calculate PQ. My PQ length will be root of Two minus one is one square plus two square plus one square. That is root six. That is indeed true. The length of line segment PQ is root six. Next is uh, coordinates of R are one comma six comma three. That is false. It is one comma six comma zero. The centroid of the triangle PQR. I have P. I have Q. I have R. The centroid will be sum of x coordinates by three. Two plus one, uh, three. Three plus one, four. Four by three. Sum of y coordinates is. Eight plus six, fourteen by three. Sum of z coordinates is five by three. So yes, it is exactly the same point. Four by three, fourteen by three, five by three. Now the perimeter of the triangle PQR is root two plus root six plus root eleven. We have already found that the 
Length PQ is root 6. So this is my PQ. Let us quickly find PR and QR. My length PR is square root of how much? This is P, this is R. So 1 minus 1 is 0, 6 minus 3, 9 plus 4. This is root 13. By the way, root 13 doesn't feature anywhere. And my length QR. QR is how much? 1 plus 1 plus 9. So this is root of 11. So the parameter is root 6 plus root 13 plus root 11. So this is uh, again false. So the only correct options are A and C. Alright, next is, again uh, you can call this a slightly lengthy but a conceptually easy question of 3D. Next is let A1, B1, C1 be 3 points in the XY plane. Uh, suppose a1, c1 and b1, c1 are tangents to the parabola y square equals to 8x where the c is minus 4 comma 0. From an external point on the axis of the parabola y square is equals to 8x, two tangents are being drawn. It will be a very very symmetric curve actually. So if you draw two tangents from the point minus 4 comma 0, this point is minus 4 comma 0. We have to find this these two points. And uh, so the equation of tangent to this curve is y is equals to mx plus a by m. Value of a is 2 plus 2 by m. And because it passes to minus 4 comma 0, 0 is equals to minus 4m plus 2 by m. If you solve this, you will get m is equals to m square equals to half so m is equals to plus minus 1 by root. And what is the relation between the parametric point of a parabola and slope of tangent? The relation is m is equals to 1 by t or t equals to 1 by m. So the parameter of these two points will be root 2 and minus root 2. Parameter of this point will be root 2. Let me just write t1 as root 2 and t2 as minus root 2. So basically we can find the coordinates of these points. Suppose we are calling them a1 b1 and this is my c1. Coordinates of a1 will be a t square comma 280. a is 2, t1 is root 2, so a t square will be 4 and 2 a t, 2 times, 2 times root 2 will be 4 root 2 and this point symmetrically will become 4 comma minus 4 root 2. So we have a1, b1, c1, everything. Can we solve the question now? O is origin of course. Yes, we are ready to solve the question. Length of line segment O a1. This is O, O, A1 length is using distance formula 4 square plus 4 root 2 whole square, 4 root 2 whole square is 32, 32 plus 16 is 48, root of 48 is 4 root 3. So yes, option number A is correct. Length of line segment A1, B1, this is a vertical line, so the difference of the y coordinates is 8 root 2, it's clearly not 16. Uh, the ortho center of triangle A1, B1, C1, so out of C and D. Either both of them could be false or not more than of one of them could be true. To find the ortho center, we need three altitudes. Now, luckily for us, one altitude is already there, which is my x-axis. Another altitude, let me try to draw from, let me try to find the slope of b1, c1. Slope of b1, c1 is minus 4 root 2 minus 0 divided by 4 plus 4, which is 8. So, 4 by 8 is half. So, minus 1 by root 2. Then the slope of altitude. Let me arbitrarily draw it like this, that this point is t, then slope of a1, d will be how much? Uh, positive root 2 and the equation of ad, a1, d equation will be y uh, minus 4 root 2 is equals to root 2 times x minus 4. Now we have to find its x intercept, where does this line cut the x-axis? x-axis equation is y equals to 0. If I put y equals to 0, I have minus 4 root 2 is equals to root 2x minus 4 root 2. Minus 4 root 2 minus 4 root 2 will cancel. I will get x also as 0. So this point actually coincides with the origin only and the ortho center of the triangle is 0 comma 0. Then d point is clearly false. Alright. Next question is. We have been given two functional equations. We know that this is a uh, solution of this functional equation is f of x is equals to some k times x. And which is the expression which converts addition into multiplication is the exponential function. So this gx is a raised to the power x. Now how do we find the value of k and a? Using the given relations that f of minus 3 by 5 is 12, 
so minus 3 by 5 k is equals to 12 so my k is minus 20 and my gx a raised to the power x that is a raised to the power minus 1 by 3 is equals to 2 so a will be 2 raised to the power minus 3 that is my 1 by 8 so i have a i have k what i can do is i can practically uh, find out everything about these two functions f1 by 4 g minus 2 and minus 8 times g0 so f of 1 by 4 plus g of minus 2 minus 8 times g of 0 will turn out to be let me write fx and gx fully okay fx is how much minus 20x and gx is how much 1 by 8 whole raised to the power x so i just have to substitute values in this f of 1 by 4 will be minus 20 by 4 g of minus 2 will be 1 by 8 power minus 2 and minus 8 times g of 0 will be 1. This is minus 5, this is 8, 8 is 64, this is minus 8. 64 minus 8 is 56, 56 minus 5 is 51. Now, if you know the solution of these standard functional equations, your life is easy. Otherwise, if you have to solve it from the sketch, the procedure is slightly longer and you must have studied this after the continuity and differentiability. All right. Next is a uh, question of probability. Okay. We have been given that a bag contains n balls out of which 3 are white. 3 white. Okay. There are 6 green and remaining. So, let us say 9 minus n minus 9 times blue balls. All right. What are they saying? This? Assume that the balls are identical. Otherwise, 3 balls are drawn randomly one after other without replacement. Each and every word is important without replacement. For i equals to 1, 2, 3. Now let w, i, g, i and b, i denote the event that ball drawn in the ith draw is a white ball, green ball and blue ball respectively. If the probability that p of w1 intersection g2 intersection b3 is equal to 2 by 5 n and the conditional probability p of b3 given w1 intersection g2 is 2 by 9, then what is the value of n? So let me look at this formula directly. Uh, you know that p of a intersection a given b is p of a intersection b upon pb. So this will be p of b3 intersection w1 intersection g2 whole divided by p of w1 intersection g2. Now the order does not matter in this. So we always start with the first row. We want to start with the first row. So let me write it as p of w1 intersection g2 intersection b3 and you know that the union uh, and intersections are commutative. So you can change the order. Divide by p of w1 intersection g2 equals to 2 by 9. Now the good thing is the probability of numerator is already given as 2 by 5 n. So we do not need to do much about it. Whole divided by p of w1 intersection g2. So what is the probability that in the first draw you get a, a white ball. How many white balls are there? 3. And how many total balls are there? n. So it will simply be 3 by n. Now after you have drawn this ball you are not going to replace it. So n minus 1 balls remain in total. Out of which how many green balls remain? 6 green balls remain. So this will be 6 divided by n minus 1. And this is 2 by 9. Now it's a very simple linear equation in n which you can solve and you will only get a single value of n. This 9 will also cancel. So my n minus 1 is turning out to be equals to 10. So my n is simply equals to 11. Now there is a chance of going off in a tangent direction and what is that? That you start calculating the value of n from this equation alone. You will get a value of n. In fact, you will get a quadratic equation in n from which you will get two values of n. 11 and 37. But that is useless because ultimately you will have to go in this direction. Then only you will be able to concretely tell that what is a value of n which satisfies all the given relations. So there is only one such value which is n equals to 11. Alright, next one is looking bulky but actually an easy question. You see most of the things are common. Let us take them common and let us write the remaining expressions. So my fx is uh, x raised to the power 20, 23 plus 20, 24 x plus 20, 25 whole divided by e raised to the power pi x times x square minus x plus 3 times sin of x plus 2. Now you are familiar with functions, you know the range of these functions. Sin x plus 2 is always positive because range of sin x is from minus 1 to 1. If you add 2, its range will become from 1 to 3. So always positive. This expression is also positive. This is a quadratic expression whose leading coefficient is positive. 
and its discriminant is negative. So its graph will always be above x axis and this is also always positive quadratic expression. And this exponential function is anyways always positive. So these three won't give us any useful scenario and we want to find the number of solutions of fx equals to 0. So the only function which can make it 0 is this polynomial. So let me take it separately. Let me write it as gx is equals to x power 2023 20, plus 2024 20, x plus 2025. 20, and if I put it equals to 0, let us find the nature of this function gx. How are we going to do that? Let us differentiate it. So g dash of x will be 2023 20, x raised to the power 2022 20, plus 2024. 20, now this is an even power of x and this is a, uh, also a positive number. So this will always be greater than 0 for all x belongs to real numbers. So we can say that this function is monotonically increasing or strictly increasing, monotonically increasing or you can even say strictly increasing. Uh, that means, uh, and also it's an odd degree polynomial, so it will cut the x-axis at least once. Because f g of minus infinity will be minus infinity, g of plus infinity will be plus infinity. While going from minus infinity to infinity, it will cut the x-axis at least once. And because it is monotonic, it cannot cut more than once, because once it goes up, it's a continuous differential function. It will never come back down. So at least one root, at most one root, so exactly one root. So this number of solutions in R will be only one because of this odd degree polynomial. All right, this big expression was given to confuse you, but actually again, it's a simple question. Next is, uh, we have these P and Q vectors given and this whole vector is equals to alpha times this plus beta times this plus gamma times P cross Q. Then we want to find the value of gamma. So if we want to eliminate these p and q, what we can take is we can take dot with p cross q on both sides. If I take dot with p cross q, 15 i cap plus 10 j cap plus 6 k cap dot p vector cross q vector and on the right hand side we have alpha times 2 p vector plus q vector is dot with p cross q plus beta times p vector minus 2q vector, it's dot with p cross q plus uh, gamma times p cross q dot p cross q, which is nothing but magnitude of p cross q, the whole square. Now the good thing, why did, why did we do this? Because p dot p cross q is 0 and so is q dot q p cross q. So this whole expression will also go to 0, this whole expression similarly will also go to 0. And p and q are well known vectors, so we will directly get the value of gamma. So let us first find p cross q vector. p vector cross q vector will be, using determinant we can find it i cap, j cap, k cap, 2, 1, 3, 1, minus 1, 1. This is 1 plus 3, 4 i cap. Let me just write its components. j cap, 2 minus 3 is minus 1, but then it will become plus 1. So 1 j cap and k cap will be minus 2 minus 1 that is minus 3, 4 1 minus 3. Now if I take its dot with this vector, it's dot with 15 comma 10 comma 6 and on the right hand side we have gamma times its magnitude whole square which will be 16 plus 1 plus 9 which is 26 and this is how much? Uh, this is of between 4 is a 60 plus 10 minus 18 is equals to 26 gamma. This is 70 minus 18 which is 52 and 52 by 26 is 2. So my value of gamma is 2. Now such vector equations are pretty common. We do a lot of such questions in our class illustrations and our module also contains such questions. A lot of such questions are also being asked in JMA so you are already familiar. If you have clear JMA that how to solve such vector equations. How do you eliminate P, Q, Alpha, Beta and in which situation what to do. So we know that if we take dot of p with p cross q, it will go to 0. And if we take dot of q also with p cross q, it will go to 0. So using properties of scalar triple product, uh, we can solve this question easily. Very, very easy question. As you see, most of the questions so far are easy to moderate. Let's keep going. Next question is, a normal with slope 1 by root 6 is drawn from the point 0, comma minus alpha to the parabola x square equals to minus 4a y. Okay, so uh, let us read the full question where a is greater than 0, let L be the line passing through 0, minus alpha and parallel to directrix of the parabola. 
Suppose L intersects the parabola at two points C and B, and R denotes the length of latest rectum, and S denotes the square of length of line segment AB. R ratio S is one by sixteen, and what is the value of twenty-four? So let us first draw the parabola. X square is equals to minus four AY. It will be downward looking parabola because A is positive. Something like this. Where will be its directrix? Its directrix will be y equals to a, and focus will be zero comma minus a. Uh, next is a slope normal with slope one by root six uh, passes through the point zero comma minus alpha. Now we don't know where this point alpha is. I'm arbitrarily drawing it that this point is zero comma minus alpha, where uh, ideally alpha should also be positive. Uh, regardless, uh, we are not going to assume any such thing. Let us uh, find the equation of normal to this parabola. Now we know the equation of normal to the parabola y square equals to four x in slope form. It is y is equals to m x minus two a m minus a m q. Now there is a shortcut to find the equation of parabola of this equation of normal to this parabola starting with this. What do you do is you replace x with y and y with x. You replace m with one by m, and you replace a with minus a. If I do all these three transformations simultaneously, I will get equation of normal to this other standard parabola. Again, we teach this in the class. So this will be uh, y will become x is equals to one by m times y plus two a by m plus a divided by m. If you rearrange it slightly, it will become y is equals to m x minus two a minus a by m square. Now, what do we want to know about this? We want to know where does it cuts the directrix of the parabola. Okay, let L be a line passing through zero comma minus alpha and parallel to the directrix of the parabola. So this line will be y equals to minus alpha. This line is. Y equals to minus alpha and cuts the parabola at two different points. We we'll, we are going to talk about them. Now this point is actually the same where the normal cuts the y axis, which is x equals to zero. So if I put x equals to zero, y will be equals to minus two a minus a by m square. What is the value of m square? One by root six. So it will become a times six. So it will be minus eight a. So I got the value of this point zero comma minus alpha. This is zero comma minus eight a, and the equation of this line is also y equals to minus eight. And now we can practically find both of these points. We are calling them a and b. Where does this line cut the parabola x square equals to minus four a y? If you put y equals to minus eight, it will become y x square is equals to thirty two a a square. So it will be uh, four root two times a. 4 root 2 times a, and what is the value of y? Minus 8a. This point is minus 4 root 2 times a comma minus 8. So we know uh, ab. We also know the length of latest rectum of this parabola is 4a. So what is r ratio s? If we calculate r ratio s, my r is what? Let us read carefully. R denotes the length of latest rectum. Length of latest rectum is simply 4a. And s denotes the square of length of line segment AB. The length of line segment AB is 4 root 2a plus 4 root 2a is 8 root 2a, and its square will be 8 root 2a the whole square. And this whole thing is being given as 1 by 16. So my relation will be 4a divided by 64 into 2 is 128a square is equals to 1 by 16. This is how much? Uh, 64 32. This is how much? 2. So my a is equals to half actually, and what are they asking is 12a. So 12 times half will be equals 24 times half will be equals to 12. So the answer to question number 12 is interestingly 12. All right, moving on. Now this was probably the toughest looking question of this paper. And toughest looking only because it's actually not that tough if you start solving it. Let me show you. How to not get overwhelmed by this question, and how to solve it. Okay, this is the question actually. X tends to one plus uh, g x divided by x minus. All right. So step by step, uh, let us try to find its value at couple of points, and uh, whenever n is a natural number and t equals to an odd natural number, then definition is this: 
rest everywhere else uh, we have a separate definition and t uh, is greater than or equals to 1 so let me define this function f of t in multiple parts suppose when t equals to 1 when t lies between 1 2 3 you see this is between two consecutive odd numbers so between 1 2 3 then we'll have t equals to 3 then t lies between 3 2 5 then t equals to 4 then t lies between 5 to 7 then t equals to 7 t lies between 7 to 9 and so on it will go on okay so if i put t equals to 1 t equals to 3 t equals to uh, 5 my bad all of these definitions i can directly get from this one okay now if t is 1 what is the value of n n is actually 1 here n is 2 n is 3 and n is 4 i have written it just for my reference so that we can be a bit fast in calculation minus 1 raised to the power 2 will become plus 1 so it will be 2 when n is equals to 2 to plus 1 is 3 so it will be minus 2 then it will be 2 and it will be minus 2 so alternated, alternatively these values are 2 minus 2 2 minus 2 at these odd numbers these definitions now let us focus on definition in between these odd integers. What happens between two consecutive odd integers? This complicated looking expression, let us see how does it simplify. So what I am going to do is, uh, this is f of 2n minus 1 is just the number previous to this and f of 2n plus 1 is just the number next to this. So here this one is 2 and here this one is minus 2. Rest, uh, the value of n for both of these is actually equals to how much? 1 only. So if I put n equals to 1 and uh, keep t as t, so if you put n equals to 1, we have 2 plus 1 that is 3 minus t by 2 times 2 and this is minus 2. So minus 2 times t minus 2n minus 1 is actually 1. 2n minus 1 is actually 1. Uh, whole divided by we have a 2 again. Alright, so this 2 and 2 cancels, 2 and 2 cancels, 3 plus 1 is 4, so overall this is 4 minus 2t. The definition between this interval 1, 2, 3 is 4 minus 2t, whenever our t lies between 1, 2, 3. Similarly, we can continue calculating these values. Uh, now we can be a bit fast. Here n is equals to 2, so if I put n equals to 2, I will get 5 minus t divided by 2 times f of 2n minus 1. This time we will take the previous value which is minus 2 and plus this time we will take 2 times and t minus 3 whole divided by 2. If you simplify this one now, this time it is t plus t is 2t and uh, minus 5 minus t is minus 8. So 2t minus 8. Do you see where are we going with this? Can you generalize? Let us calculate one more value and then we are going to generalize. If we calculate one more value, from between 5 to 7, what will happen is, uh, again, we will take f of 5, which is plus 2. So, it will be uh, 2 by 2 times 2n, value of n is 3. So, it will be uh, 7 minus t minus 2 uh, by 2 times t minus 5. So, you see, it will be uh, minus 2t and it will be 7 plus 5, 12. So, 12 minus 2t and the next definition if I, if I were to generalize would be 2t minus 16. You see 4 minus 8, 12 minus 16, this is going on and minus 2t plus 2t minus 2t plus 2t. This pattern is going on. Now, let us look at the question. The question is let gx is the integral 1 to x ft dt. One more thing that could be beneficial for us is now drawing the graph of ft. Now that we have defined ft for all the intervals from you know 1 starting with 1. At 1, its value is 2, but right after 1, it starts from, uh, when you put 1, it starts from 2 only and then it's a line with negative slope and when we reach 3, it becomes minus 2, okay, it becomes minus 2 and when is it 0 actually, it is 0 precisely when t becomes equals to 2. Similarly, this will be 0 when t equals to 4, this will be 0 when t equals to 6, so you see midway between these, it is getting 0. And all of these lines, you will see again start from 2, go to minus 2. It starts from 2, go to minus 2. And at precisely these points, definition are these ones. This is hollow, this is solid. Solid, hollow. Solid, hollow. Some, something similar graph you have seen in fractional part function. This is 2. 
all of these are minus 2, this is 1, this is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. Now what is the question? The question is gx is the integral of fx, x belongs to open 1 to infinity. Let alpha denote the number of solutions of the equation gx equals to 0 in the interval open 1 to close 8. Okay, and then we have to calculate and beta uh, beta equals to limit x tends to 1 plus gx divided by x minus 1. What is the value of the limit uh, in just the right neighborhood of 1, just towards the right of 1, it is 2. Okay, gx tends to uh, x tends to 1 plus x minus 1. gx, does it tend to 0? D, uh, x tends to 1 plus uh, gx. gx is actually the integral, no? So, if we talk about the integral gx in just the right neighborhood of 1, it will tend to 0, okay? And the denominator is also 0. So, what will happen is we can use the uh, L Hopital uh, rule by differentiating both the numerator and denominator. So, it will be the same as limit x tends to 1 plus g dash x divided by 1. And g dash x is nothing but f of x uh, when x tends to 1 plus limit x tends to 1 plus f of x and all of us know that limit x tends to 1 plus f of x is nothing but uh, 2. So, my this is the value of beta. Now, alpha is slightly tricky. Number of solutions of equation gx equals to 0 and 1 to 8. When does this integral become 0? So, you see this is very much symmetric. So far, we have positive area, then we have negative area and they are balanced. So, they will become 0 when x equals to 3. When x equals to 3, area will become 0 again, positive area, negative area again will become 0 at 5. Then we will start having positive area, negative area again become 0 at 7. Until 8, we will have positive area only. So, these are the three points at which the area becomes 0. So, my uh, alpha is 3. Beta is 2, alpha is 3, sum of alpha plus beta will be 5. This was probably one of the trickiest question of this paper because it was really difficult to analyze this much within exam pressure and exam time. But it is not that you cannot do it, it is very much within your domain. Alright, let us move on to the next section which is the comprehension based questions and the answer to these comprehension based questions is actually numerical answer. Up to 2 decimal you have to round off if the answer is uh, non empty. Now, the first question is let s is equals to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and x be the set of all the relations from s to s which satisfy the following properties. So, first of all s cross s how many elements will be there 6 times 6 that is 36 and you know that any subset of s cross s will be a relation. But they should also be satisfying the following conditions r is exactly 6 elements out of these 36 elements you have to pick 6 but not from any 36, you have to pick all the elements such that difference is greater than or equal to 2. So, let us subtract from these 36 pair the pairs where the difference is less than 2, which are the pairs where difference is less than 2, where difference is 0. Such pairs are 1, 1, 2, 2 and 6, 6. So, these 6 pairs we are going to subtract from these 36 pairs. When difference is 1, how many such pairs are there? 1, 2 and 2, 1, 2, 3. 3 comma 4, 4 comma 5 and 5 comma 6 and the reverse will also be there 2, 1, 3, 2, 4, 3, 5, 4 and 6, 5. So, 5 of these, 5 of the reverse, these are 10 such pairs and 10 plus 6 is 16. So, you have to avoid these 16 pairs, rest all 36 minus 16 which is 20 is fine. 36 minus 16 is equals to 20. So, uh, we have these 20 uh, ordered pairs from which I can make this relation and how many relations are possible if I have to choose 6 elements in the relation only from these 20 elements that number turns out to be 20 C 6. So, number of such relations x what are by the way y and z we will come to y and z probably in the next question as of now the question is only asking about number of elements in x. So, number of elements in x is 20 C 6. So, if you compare it with the M C 6 my value of M is simply 20. Uh, next is, uh, if the value of ny plus nz is k squared, then what is the magnitude of k? So, let us count each of them separately. Let us see what is the set y. Set y is all the relations belonging to x such that range of r has exactly one element. Okay. Now, we want to have six elements as well. We want to have difference in the elements more than two as well. 
and range of r has exactly one element so let us see if any such relation is even possible so uh, first of all if i want the range to be a singleton set and then z is uh, r is a subset of x such that r is a function from s to s if r is a function from s to s let us consider both of these together this is my y this is my z so if we want to have a function from 2 3 4 5 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 then how many choices do i have for output of 1 the number of choices for out output for 1 is this cannot be the output this cannot be output we can have four outputs so four choices similarly for 2 these three cannot be the output then 4 5 4 6 there are three outputs Similarly, three outputs for this, three possible outputs for this, three possible outputs for this, and four possible outputs for this. So in total, using fundamental principle of counting, how many choices of functions do we have? This is 4 into 3 power 4 into another 4. So this is 4 is square into 3 raised to the power of 4. All right. Let me keep it as it is. Let us not calculate this number. As far as this is concerned, that the range of R has exactly one element. Suppose that element is 1. Suppose that element is 1, then uh, 6 can be connected to 1, 5 can be connected to 1, 4 can be connected to 1, 3 can be connected to 1, but 2 and 1 cannot be connected to 1. Why? Because of this relation that mod of a minus b must be greater than or equal to 2. And because range cannot have more than this one, uh, any one element, I have arbitrarily picked one, then there will not be 6 elements in the relation. There can be at most four elements, either three elements or four elements in the relation. If the range is singleton element and uh, and this uh, uh, these constraints also have to be satisfied. So no such relation is possible. So number of elements in y is actually zero, and number of elements in z is equal to this. So if we add n x n y plus n z, this is simply this whole number. N of y plus n of z is equal to zero plus 4 square 3 power 4 so this is 4 square into 3 power 4 uh, and if you compare it with k square then k will be the under root of this then mod of k is simply 4 times 9 which is 36 so the answer to this question is 36 but if you are not careful enough uh, you even after doing everything correctly calculating thing correctly if you calculate n, n y plus n z please read the full question what are they asking are they asking this n y plus n z or the root of that or the square of that or what are they asking all right uh, the next paragraph we have to we have been given a function f x g x as root of pi x by 2 minus x square and f x is sin square x okay then uh, we have to find the value of this integral so let me assume that the value of this integral is i and let us apply one of the most used properties of integration which is king's rule so let me just focus on this one what is this integral this integral is i is equals to 2 times integral from 0 to pi by 2 what is fx fx is sin square x what is gx root of pi x oh, let me do one thing let me take x common from these terms what will remain is pi by 2 minus x uh, dx and this whole thing is i now let me apply king's rule which is i can replace x with pi by 2 minus x and by doing this the integral doesn't change integral remains the same so my i will be 2 times integral from 0 to pi by 2 sine of pi by 2 minus x will become cos x so this will be cos square x times root of this x will become pi by 2 minus x and this pi by 2 minus pi by 2 minus x will become x and dx let us write it as equation 1 this is equation number 2 if I add both of these, then my 2i is equals to 2 times integral of sin square plus cos square is 1. And uh, the only integration that will remain is x times pi by 2 minus x dx. Now you can see that this is nothing but gx, integral of gx dx. My, what was the left hand side? Left hand side was 2 times integral of fx gx dx turns out to be actually integral of 0 to pi by 2 gx dx. So if you bring this on the left hand side, this whole expression will become equals to 0. So the given interval is 0. Alright, let us look at the next part of the question.
in the last question of the paper, they are asking the actually the value of integral 0 to pi by 2 fx dx. So to make our life really simple, what are we going to do is, we are going to use the previous question to solve this problem. In the previous question, we just learned that 2 times from 0 to pi by 2 fx dx dx is actually equals to from 0 to pi by 2 uh, g of x dx. All right. So this is my integral and uh, next is uh, let us actually start calculating it. So my i is now I will take this into account later that I, as of now I am just calculating from 0 to pi by 2 uh, gx dx. What was my gx? gx was uh, pi x by 2 minus x square. So what we are going to do is we are going to try to make it a perfect square. So this is 2 times uh, pi by 4 times x. So we will have to add a pi by 4 whole square and subtract a pi by 4 whole square. So let me write subtraction first and addition later or any anything is fine pi by 4 whole square plus and this is minus pi by 4 the whole square. So what this becomes is from integral from 0 to pi by 2 integral of root of pi by 4 the whole square minus this whole thing I can write as x minus pi by 4 the whole square dx. So either you can substitute x minus pi by 4 as t and then assume this whole thing as pi by 4 times sin theta. Okay. Let me do one thing. Let me assume x minus pi by 4 as a sin theta which is pi by 4 times sin theta. So what will my dx be? dx will be pi by 4 times cos theta d theta. And let us see then what will the integral become. See, if you, it's your wish that if you remember, then you can directly use the integral. I am doing this integral from scratch by simple substitution. Now, if we do that, uh, I'll do one thing that I'm not going to change the limits as of now. I'm just going to calculate everything in terms of theta. Then I will convert theta again in terms of x and then put the limits. So that will make our life simple. So what we have now is integral times pi by 4 times cos theta d theta. And what will this whole expression become? Pi by 4 is whole square minus pi by 4 whole square sin square theta, which will become pi by 4 times cos theta. So another we will have pi by 4 whole square and cos square theta d theta. Now this is pi square by 4 for the 16 times cos square theta we can write it as 1 plus cos 2 theta by 2 d theta. So we can write as pi square by 16 into theta by 2 plus this is or rather yeah, plus sine 2 theta by 4. Let me do one thing. Why don't we just substitute the limits as well? If I put x as 0, okay, then sine theta will be equals to minus 1. And uh, uh, what about theta? Then theta will be actually, I want to calculate the limit of theta. So theta will be minus pi by 2. And if I put x as pi by 2, then pi by 2 minus pi by 4 will be pi by 4. Pi by 4 by pi by 4 is 1. Sine theta equals to 1. So, uh, sorry, so theta will be pi by 2. So limit I can directly substitute as from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. If you substitute these limits, then both the times this sine 2 theta will go to 0. So our integral will be pi square by 16 times pi by 2 by 2. So it will actually be pi by 4 plus pi by 4. So overall it is pi square by 4, uh, 16 into 2 is 32. Now what about this integral? Uh, if I take a 2 common, then this is 8 by pi cube times this integral. So my desired integral is 8 by pi cube times, and this will also become pi cube, times pi cube divided by 32. So this whole thing is 1 by 4, which is 0 0.25. So my answer to the final question is 0 0.25. And this was a slightly better question. Again, overall, the level of paper was easy. And uh, one or two questions were difficult, a few moderate questions, but most of them are doable to the level of J-Min questions. So this is historically probably one of the easiest paper of J-Advanced.